as it usually goes, even though the Los Angeles Lakers have been <laughs> pretty bad last year, um, and even in this offseason, they haven't got a lot better, or um, subjectively, they haven't become a perfect contending team. The Lakers have had a lot of publicity, and not only with LeBron James, obviously does a lot of publicity follow him, the Los Angeles Lakers have been a popular team no matter how good they were. Even the years where, you know, Kobe was older, he was getting injured a lot, D'Angelo Russell's rookie year, stuff like that. Um, years where they were starting Robert Sacre at center, which is never a good thing if you want to win NBA games. Even those years, they were still a fairly popular team. You know, people were attending the games. Um, they were making money. And it's just because of their prestigious history. You know, they're in a very big market. They're in a great spot as far as a sports franchise goes. But at the end of the day, they also don't really get or haven't had as much success lately as they did in the past. Even the last few years of Kobe's career, they didn't really have a lot of success. They never made the playoffs all those years. And probably the biggest memory from those years is Kobe's final game where he dropped, I believe, 60 points, hit the game winner. Just a lot of good stuff there. Um, but unfortunately for the Lakers fans, they haven't been good for a long time. You know, they had the, um, the, uh, 2020 bubble run, which was a good run. I mean, you know, you had Kentavious Caldwell Pope was a good shooting guard beside LeBron James. They win the finals there. That was kind of a weird time for the NBA. And I don't completely take that out or let me adjust this camera real quick. I don't completely act like, you know, oh, it's the Disney the Disney ring or the Le Disney ring, whatever they call it nowadays. Because, um, you know, every championship has a what if, you know, what if Kevin Durant never got hurt? Does Kawhi Leonard beat the Warriors? Probably not. What if, you know, James Harden and Kyrie Irving were healthy? Do the Bucks win a championship? Probably not not what if Kevin Durant's foot wasn't on the line do we win the championship probably not it's just a lot of what ifs and you can really apply that to every season you know what if um the bubble didn't happen do the Lakers and Heat make it to the finals I doubt it one of them probably does I would probably say the Lakers do because they were just really good that year but the Heat really seemed like a team that came on hard in that bubble and they really didn't have a lot of success um outside of the bubble setting in the playoffs until last year so at the end of the day you know, it's hard to kind of predict where the Lakers are going to be because it seems like one year, you know, they're winning the finals. The next, they're getting eliminated pretty embarrassingly in the playoffs by the Suns. And then now, last season, they missed the playoffs completely. Don't even make the play-in tournament. They were trying and fighting for it, um, which is a confusing thing in and of itself that that would have been a considered a successful season because you're the Lakers. You've got LeBron. You've got Westbrook. You've got Anthony Davis. A play-in appearance, yeah, you might, you know, get a lot of um, success out of it. You might be able to find your fight your way into the playoffs and have a little bit of success there. But if you're a Lakers fan or you're a Lakers team player on the team, you're pushing for a deep playoff run. And if you make the play-in, you're only going to have to play that many more games to try and even get into the playoffs. So at the end of the day, I wouldn't really consider that a successful outing for a team that's built like this Lakers team was. And at also, at the end of the season, as we all know, they kind of fell apart. You know, injuries really hurt them. You know, LeBron had some time missed. AD had a lot, a lot of time missed, as he always does. Russell Westbrook did miss a few games, but he really just um, struggled last season. He still did put up good stats, 17-7-7. Seven, seven, and, seven, and, you know, he wasn't as bad as, in my opinion, as everybody tries to make him seem to be. But, you know, now it's all coming out that, you know, he's prepared to come off the bench. Dennis Schroeder, Patrick Beverly is um are both probably going to start over russell westbrook and they have a decent chance this year to bounce back in my opinion you know a lot of people aren't giving the lakers the benefit of the doubt there's a predictions a few predictions that i've seen that um at best they might bounce back to about the fifth or the sixth seed in the western conference which in my opinion once again would still be a failure yeah you might be able to make a, a long run into the playoffs or a deep playoff run even from those positions but at the end of the day if you've got lebron if you've got anthony davis who hopefully he can stay healthy because as we all know he rarely, rarely gets a lot of playing time nowadays because of how many injuries he constantly has. And I pray that he can stay healthy this season because it's not like I want to see him fail. You know, I don't really ever appreciate the um, 
people or the analysts that say Anthony Davis is better than Giannis or Anthony Davis is one of the best big men in the league and while I do think he is it's kind of hard to rate him or rate him over other guys when availability is a very big aspect of being a good NBA player sure you might have a lot of talent but if you're never on the floor, what does it matter if you're great like that? I mean, you've got to be able to stay healthy consistently. And I hope Anthony Davis can because his knees the last few years have just been, his knees and his ankles have just been made of glass. It's just been like every time he steps on the floor, it seems like he gets hurt. And I really hope we get to see him healthy for another full season like they did back in 2020. And now LeBron, you know, he's aging, but he's coming off of one of the best years of his career. And I am excited for Lakers basketball. I'm not a Lakers fan, but I'm excited to see what they can do. I'm a Russell Westbrook fan, and I think he's going to bounce back. I think Westbrook's not going to return to that MVP self. He's not going to be the, you know, the best point guard in the NBA, but he's going to have a good season. If they can just get him to accept that, you know, now he's the third option, he doesn't have to force up a lot of shots. He doesn't need to be clutch, clutch, for them to win games like he needed to be, you know, in Houston alongside James Harden, in Washington alongside Bradley Beal, and that last year in OKC where his second best player was Jeremy Grant, basically. They don't need that from Russell Westbrook. They just need an all-star Russell Westbrook. They don't need no MVP triple-double averaging Russell Westbrook. They need him to be a good starting point guard, and if he's not that level, if he doesn't return to that level, they at minimum need him to just be a good role player because they made the moves that while a lot of people didn't expect them to make these certain signings and trades you know a lot of people expect them to go after Buddy Heald a lot of people expect them to go after Miles Turner they made moves in order to justify keeping Russell Westbrook if Westbrook struggles starting then having him come off the bench is a very elite weapon I mean not even that if you look at this team, if you're playing the Lakers and you look at them and you see, okay, they've got Patrick Beverly starting, you've got LeBron, you've got AD, you've got Schroeder or Dennis Schroeder, Thomas Bryant in there at center, that's a scary team, yeah. Then off the bench, you guys have a former MVP guy coming in the game who can easily give you 18 to 20 a game even off the bench and also, you know, good amount of rebounds, a good amount of assists, just a, an overall very solid NBA player in Russell Westbrook now. That is a very scary sight to see for a contending team, especially when in the playoffs, depth is the biggest thing. And now they have three basically starting caliber point guards. Yes, Dennis Schroeder had had a bit of a year, an off year last year. And, you know, he fumbled the bag when the Lakers offered him that big contract a few years ago. But now he's got another opportunity to make up for that bag, make up for that bag fumble. I just sounded like a lamb. I'm bah, bah. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but, um, Sure, I guess that's something I do now. Um, but yeah, Schroeder's got an opportunity to make up for his loss. You know, Patrick Beverly's got a big opportunity, in my opinion, to make up for, you know, losing in the playoffs last year. He was a leader for that Timberwolves team, and now he comes in and he can really anchor this Lakers defense all together. And while he's not going to wow you on offense, he is still a competent offensive player. And like I said, I it all just comes down to if they can stay healthy and if the chemistry can be there and I am very excited to see what the Lakers end up doing this year you know I'm not the biggest fan of the Lakers but I will have to say it's entertaining when the Lakers are good you know I'm a I like LeBron he's not a bad guy I don't hate him and I find it entertaining when LeBron has a good NBA season so I find myself rooting for them to be at least competent at least decent in the NBA season and um, you know that's a rare thing because a lot of people hate the Lakers just because they're the Lakers and I find myself on the other side of that argument I'm not a fan but I do support them because it seems like whenever they're good the NBA is a lot more fun to watch and that's basically where I stand on this I just wanted to give you guys my outlook on the Lakers season you know there's a lot riding on this year LeBron he's older you know he's aging yes he's playing at a high level but how long can he do that is the real question and Anthony Davis if he gets injured this year there's a very high possibility that the Lakers end up shipping him out of Los Angeles in my opinion and um, that's going to be probably one of the biggest trades or what ifs if he didn't stay keep getting injured you know how good would the Lakers have been if Anthony Davis didn't continuously get hurt would be a big question mark on this dynasty attempt but at the end of the day 
We've just got to wait and see what happens this season. Anthony Davis has always had the history of getting injured, and um, we really, really will never know if he's going to be healthy at any point in the year until we watch the game happen. Um, how do you guys feel about the Lakers or the games happen? How do you guys feel about the Lakers this season? I know this is a topic that's talked about a lot, but I haven't really talked about them too much across this offseason just because um, I kind of wanted to avoid them as a whole because of how popular or how how much they get talked about even for being a bad NBA team. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about the Lakers and what their, you know, their ceiling is this season um, or what their floor is in your opinion. As always, if you do enjoy my content though, I ask you to hit the like button and subscribe. It helps me out so much. And I thank you guys for supporting me, continuing to watch my videos. Turn on post notifications so you never miss any of my videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.